Right, okay, thank you for joining The Average Golfer. I'm down here at 4 Golf Chester. We're gonna be testing what I consider to be one of the best value versus performance golf balls that there is on the mar in the marketplace right now. And we're gonna pitch it up against arguably what is recognized as the best golf ball in the marketplace right now, and that's the Titleist Pro V1. But it's not me that's gonna be testing it. It's Team Average, it's four golfers, four different handicaps, four different swing speeds. We're gonna test them first of all, Dry ball days are head to head, pitching wedge, seven iron driver. They're going to take them out there on the course, going to give them balls out there for a week, test them in real conditions, and then they're going to give you their overall summary. Some details about the mystery golf ball. Well, it's a four piece golf ball, it's got urethane cover, it's aimed at low spinning off the driver and great for the short game in terms of providing that extra bit of spin when it's needed. The best of both worlds, which is again, very much similar to the tail that you'll be expecting from the Pro V1. We've already collected dry ball data last week, and let me tell you before I go any further, there are a few surprises, that certainly some eye openers, so don't go anywhere. Let's start there, one by one, let's look at the dry ball data and see what impact this golf ball had on performance compared to the Pro V1. I was impressed with the consistency of the seed ball um, in all of the results. In comparison to the Pro V1 which I was using to test against, it was, uh, with my 52 degree wedge I was aiming for a 100 yard shot in relation to all. The Pro V1 was slightly under, the seed ball was slightly longer but both in the ballpark. The 7 iron again it was consistent in the sense it was a little bit longer than the Pro V1 and that was a pattern I found um, again with the driver. In terms of the dry ball data, it was a very consistent performing ball, which is roughly in the same ballpark as the Pro V1. I think the overriding thought I got from dry ball data was how similar the products were. I couldn't really differentiate them, the uh, feel was very much the same, perhaps even a bit softer with the seed ball. Uh, but, you know, when I actually saw it at the end, I thought, well, this is a club that's, club that's performing or, well, any club really with the ball, and uh, it's performing well, just as well as it would with the Pro V1. Was you surprised at all? Yes, yeah. I didn't think it would. Uh, I'm one of these players, I suppose, like a lot of them, they feel guilty if they're not using the tight list. Yeah. And you put something else out and you're, you're prejudiced against it, you think this is going to perform as well, I'm not going to like this. And the first bad shot you hit, you think, oh, back in the bag, tight list comes out again. I've done that a few times I've gone to Strix on or something like that. <laughs> this bowler wouldn't. So when I look through the numbers on both the Pro V and the Seed, uh, they're very, very similar. There's not a lot in it. Um, wedge, a couple of hundred revs. Um, seven iron, again another couple of hundred revs, and the same with the driver, um, splitting airs really about strike. Uh, but they both give really good spin numbers. I'd be really happy with any of them if I was hitting them out on the course. The dry ball data was quite uh, not what I expected. The inf information that came back from, uh, from Trackman sort of uh, showed them to the Pro V1 to be very similar to the C2. And I, that was quite unexpected really, I expected the, the Pro V1 to be, if anything, even only slightly better, some way better, because of, uh, well, you, you're sort of, um, the price of them, you're um, encouraged to think that it's a premium ball and therefore you'll get the best, best possible um, results from it, but that wasn't necessarily the case. Okay, so part one of the test complete, a few surprises, we've got the opinions of team average. But we all know dry ball data, it's a confined area, it's, is, it, is it real? No, it's not. So what we needed to do was phase two of this test was to take the golf ball out on the golf course in a real environment and see how it performs in each of the different areas. And then it's over to team average to give their overall summary and what they think of this golf ball when they put it to the test in a real situation. I thought it was not noticeable and I made a point of switching the balls when I played uh, earlier this week. Um, between hole after hole. Um, I didn't notice any difference between the Seed and the Pro V1 in terms of performance, to the point where I was having to check the ball at the end 
of the hole to just make sure which one I've been using on that, that particular uh, section. I don't catch the ball uh, consistently sweetly as often as I would like and certainly didn't that day although Saturday I had a better day. Um, I, I found when I was catching the ball sweetly it was a sweet strike whichever ball I, I was using and in that sense there was no distinction between them. Where I did feel very good with the seed ball was noticeably on putting. It felt that it was coming off the putter face uh, very well. Um, I like the sound of it. Um, I like the little alignment line it, it has on it, um, which I have to put on my own Pro V1. Um, so yeah, around the green, I, I felt um, I liked it probably more so than the Pro V1. I think pricing seed have got it right. Um, where seed need to to progress is that most golfers are, are, are habitual players. So I don't buy the Bruxa Pro V1s at 40 quid. I'll wait till Titleist to have a promotion and then I'll buy the four for the price of three, buy them from my club, which gives me an additional discount uh, opportunity. Um, or I'll buy Pro V1s, which are not brand new, but still barely noticeable, as far as I'm concerned, at, at 27 pound. Um, I think Seed have the opportunity to get into a market, but they've now got to be really clever about how they change the habits of golfers to get into it. I like the pricing, um, the mail order, uh, you're then stuck with the postage costs. Um, I think it's around about five pounds for postage, unless of course you buy greater quantities, which, which might give you a, a better scheme. Um, I think on the basis that, that Seed wants a subscription system, um, that could work. Um, but they need to reward loyalty and essentially get it to the point where they have seed balls throughout your bag because most golfers don't exclusively play with a Pro V1 they'll have other balls that they play with but seed is a price point where you could actually have that throughout your bag without exception. Well I've played twice with these now, one a truncated round because of the rain but it was very evident to me that I went out there that, that I wasn't losing any distance. Now for someone my age, senior golfer, I know exactly what I hit and I wasn't losing any perceptible distance at all, the feel was very very good and the accuracy was just the same really. I was just again uh, pleasantly surprised how similar it was to performance of my premium and much more expensive ball. Well, I'm sorry to be boring about this, but I thought it was very, very similar around the green. What struck me most of all and really impressed me was the softness of the putter face. Hold a lot of good putts. Uh, I felt confident behind the ball. Uh, it rolled well, but it felt beautiful off the face and I felt like I was going to hold them. Same with the chipping, really. Nice and soft. Uh, that's what I thought. I didn't notice anything any different. I'm not the best chipper in the world, so I'm probably not the best judge. But I have to say, it was certainly no worse. Uh, I would happily put it in the bag on that basis. I was very impressed. But my overall summary of the ball is it's a very, very good uh, ball for half the price of the famous premium product tight list. I think the, the issues uh, are not about the, the, the golfer actually acquiring the ball, even though it's online. That isn't a problem to anybody. What I think it is, is this market breakthrough. You know, how do you mark your balls? How do you mark your tight list? Is that going to apply to seed? Is it going to catch on in that way? Well, I think it's just about getting the product out there. If they can either find a way of getting it into the pros, into the retail, Tailors, you know, get a little bit wider than that. I think if people give them a sleeve of the balls, you know, and they'll try them for themselves, I think they'll be very impressed. People are looking to save money because golf products are going up all the time. All the clubs, the drivers, the irons, and everything else. At last, here's a very, very good product coming in at half the price, which will give most of us, the average golfers, everything we need and be very satisfied with. So I think it's just a question of them breaking through in the market. I think you get them in the hands of the average golfer, they'll want to buy them. A click of the internet, and it'll be well worth money. Well, money well worth spent. Uh, so, using the ball out on the course, I pretty much compared it with a tailor-made TP5. So I'd hit one shot, then the other. Um, and on a couple of occasions, there was a yard or two in it. Uh, the seed was longer a couple of times. Um, I'd actually say, on a full shot with a driver, you get a better sound out of the um, out of the seed ball. Um, and, but like I say, the distances were very, very comparable. So again, happy with both. So again, I compared against the TP5 and from full shots in with a wedge, distances were very similar, maybe a little bit further with the seed. Um, but again, they stopped really quickly, like I'd expect them to. Um, not a lot of run out with either of them. Then I came in closer and done little short chips. And I would say the seed ball sounded a little firmer off the face. However, they still expected, uh, they, they performed how I'd expect them to. They still stopped relatively quickly. They ran out to a very sort of similar distance. 
um, so no issues with either ball. And with putter? Again, putter, I would say the seed sounded a little firmer, but really nice roll, um, went roughly the kind of distance I'd expect it to, compared it with the TP5, and even though there's a slight difference in sound, the performance of the ball was very, very similar. So the, the price comparison on them, um, they're pretty much half of the price if you're buying them online um, and the performance out of them, I would say they're very, very similar. So, you know, if you want to buy a trusted brand that you know the name of and tell your mates that you're playing a Pro V1, then fair enough. But if you want to play a ball that performs equally as well and it's half the price, then I'd have no issues buying that at all. And nowadays, the amount of things that people buy online, um, I don't really see a problem with buying golf balls and things online. I think it shows good value for money. As far as on the course goes, uh, it felt no different to uh, to any other ball. I compared it uh, with the Pro V1X more than with the Pro V1. Uh, I, I, it with the, the feedback from the ball was very similar, if not slightly better from the seed. It was slightly softer. Pro V1X felt a little bit firmer on the face, whereas the, the seed felt nice and soft and compressing against the face as you hit it, especially with the, with the irons. Um, driver uh, and woods, to me, they're, they're a bit like chocolate. Uh, you could know, you know there are different brands, but you can't necessarily taste the difference. And so it was with these. The control uh, on the short game was was excellent uh, for the seed. It was as you'd expected for a Pro V1X. Um, but having said that. Uh, there was very little to be gained by paying the extra money for, for the Pro V1, in my opinion. The seed was as good as it. Uh, when I took it onto the putting green, the roll was true, depending on the putting green. But by and large, the results that I got were excellent. Overall, uh, it's a ball I would put in my bag. I would gain this one. Um, there, it's value for money. I would normally use a Titleist ball and I would use a Tour Soft. Uh, this felt very similar to a Tour Soft, it was nice and soft around the greens but it got good uh, low spin off the tee. Um, the price point would be similar to the, um, to the Tour Soft rather than the Pro V1 and Pro V1X and therefore it represents better value for money. The, the point at the moment that they distribute them uh, from Ireland by post would be an issue for me because if I lose ammo then I want to replace it fairly handily and not necessarily be held up by postal delays. But I suppose if I organised myself I could get things uh, sorted so that I had enough um, balls in my bag. Uh, as far as uh, the future is concerned I, I would not hesitate to put this in the bag. Right, okay, so it's over to me to summarise, but uh, I think, in a way, the reason I stayed out of the video is because, as you know, Seed support the channel, so I didn't want anything sort of too biased, so in many ways, I'll let you draw your own conclusions. Uh, the idea behind this was, in October of last year, I first tried out a Seed golf ball. I was really surprised and shocked by its performance, and I've been waiting to do this video for quite some time, where we get some uh, four independent voices, and uh, let them try them out, and like I said, from dry ball data through to out there on the course, it seems to me, from what I've watched, a very, very positive response. So uh, I'll leave it at that. And like I said, have a look through the numbers, maybe pause a few of those clips and uh, just analyse some of that data if you're interested in that. It's very, very close indeed. There's very little to separate the golf balls uh, at all. And I think it just shows that there's plenty of product out there. If you have a bit of a route round, there's some affordable product that performs really, really well. I think the C golf ball fits into that category. Uh, I'm going to put the link down below. If you are interested uh, in purchasing these things online, then uh, I'll put a link through to Seed on how you can do that. Uh, as ever, thank you for watching. Um, and I'll see you very, very soon. And uh, oh, hey, comment, subscribe, like, do all them things as well. Um, yeah, I'm off.